All right, Old Time Rock and Roll by Bob Seger, the live version. That's important because the album version is a whole step up in F sharp, but the live version is a much more guitar oriented version and it's just an E. And we're in standard tuning as well, which leads me to the next thing is let's go ahead and tune together so that we can play in tune while you learn the song. So first of all, here's your first string, your lowest string, your E string. Next string, your A string. Next string, your D string. Next, G. And your B. And finally, your E string, last one. You should be able to play an E chord and sounds like this. And you're going to want a tone sort of similar to that sort of classic rock tone. Okay, so this song is pretty simple. It's not exactly super advanced, but there are some guitar solos that I would not recommend unless you have been playing guitar a little bit. Even so, I'll teach you them anyways, but the main bits of the song are actually pretty easy to play and simple. So I'll go ahead and show them to you and explain them in various different ways. So whatever makes the most sense to you, you'll have a way to understand it. So we're gonna start right here. If you like fret language, then that is the second fret on the A string and then an open string, the lowest string. And you're gonna bounce back and forth with a very steady rhythm like this. That's the first couple of bits. So it's like do, 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 do. And then with your pinky, you're gonna go up one more note. And you can add in those extra little accent notes. Do, da, da, do, da. But often live, Bob Seeger, who was, who's the singer and the actual, it's his band. He was playing guitar as well. And he would just play very simple. So you don't have to add in those extra notes if you don't want to. That's just sort of a feel thing. You can just feel it out. So then that's sort of like section one of the riff. It's on the lower string. And then to transition to the next section, which is almost the same thing, but on the next highest string, you have this little. That, that's the third fret and the fourth fret if you care so now to section two again you transition do that little thing and then you're gonna play essentially the same thing but everything is up a string but now it's two on d string and a string the second and the third string Got that, so, so far. It also helps to tap your foot with this riff because the rhythms are not always straight on the beat, if you know what I mean. It's not do, 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 do. There's some do, 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 uh, do, do in between beat. You don't have to think about it that way because that'll be confusing, but it, you should tap your foot because that'll help you keep time when you're trying to lock in with what you hear. So keep that in mind. So again, so far we have. And then we have section three. And again, that's sort of a similar repetition of it, but you're gonna go up from the open string to two frets up, two notes up. 
And it's a big stretch. So you new guitar players, this might be hard for you. That's completely normal. It's a big stretch. I mean, you can see that it's a big stretch. So don't fret if it's tough. If you mess it up sometimes, that's all right. Just give it a go and keep working at it and you'll get, you'll be able to do those stretches eventually. Just don't get hung up on it, you know, keep in sight the big picture of playing the whole riff. If you can't do that one part perfect, that's okay. So then you're going to do essentially the same thing. And then there's another transition back into section one, which is the, the lower one. It's pretty tricky, so pay attention. It's... got that that's i'll do that really slow and i'll tell you the fret numbers so you're gonna do a little slide down like a mini slide this is your your target note so you don't it doesn't even really matter what note you're sliding from just as long as it's relatively close you can even do it just from one spot above one fret. from one fret above If you can't do those extra embellishments, you can just play it very straightforward like that. But that's not what the guitar player does. He goes. So practice the simpler version first. And then work your way up if you want it to sound better with those little embellishments. And that leads you back into. It's not the beginning yet, though. There's actually a little bit more before we start over the, the whole pattern. So that's section three. And then section four is a lot like section one. It comes after section three. We see that before when you played section one, there was extra time before you went to that. That third note there. That's section one. This time we play in the same spot, but it's actually about half as long before we go to that third note. And then you're just gonna hit a big B chord. You got all that? I'm sure that's starting to sound like a lot of information. So let's go over it, play it slowly. So from the very beginning, this riff. start over and that's pretty much the whole song honestly you can get away with playing almost the whole song that way playing just that bit that's really how the guitar part goes for almost the whole song until the lead guitar starts playing now the other guitar player is still playing that part that i just taught you that whole bit but the lead guitar player plays something different and i'll teach you that too but that's pretty complicated. We're gonna have to do that in a second. But before I teach you that lead part, you're gonna need to master this rhythm part first. So work on that, go back over the video, again, play it very <laughs> Memorize the part and do it until you can get it relatively clean. Again, it doesn't have to include all the embellishments, but you do need to be able to get through it and play it as if it's a piece of music. You got that? So do that and then come back when you're ready for the lead parts. All right. See you then. <laughs> 